Welcome to our workshop on photography. I'm joined by Campbell Addy, a photographer who shot magazine covers, fashion editorials, and major campaigns. Today's workshop will help anyone who wants to become a photographer gain a better understanding of how to shoot fashion stories. After the workshop, you'll be invited to submit your work, and one of the pieces will be featured on ID. So hit subscribe to see if your work is featured. We'll start by hearing how Campbell got into the fashion industry and where he got his big breaks. Then we'll set a task and guide you through submitting your work to ID. I'm really excited to speak to Campbell. I love his work and I can't wait to find out more. Hi Campbell, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Thank you for joining us today. No, thank you so much for having me. So let's start by talking about how you got started in photography. My journey in photography is quite random. Like I did study at A-level, but I didn't really take it seriously until I went to St. Martin's for my BA, but it was in a photography course and we just had to do everything. So I kind of fell into it because it was familiar to me. It kind of just became the norm, really. So did you always want to be a photographer? No, I initially started off seeing fashion imagery and not understanding what the role of photographer was. So I wanted to make clothes. I remember watching a lot of fashion TV, wanting to be part of the industry, but not knowing how. So I first started assisting stylists, actually. And it was when I was on set with the late Barry Kamen who was shooting with Jamie Morgan. He was like, you clearly want to be a photographer. And it kind of then shifted me that way. I assisted set design, I did web design, I did everything and then landed on photography. I always wanted to do something lens-based. I just didn't think taking pictures in reality would make me money. I thought it'd be a hobby I'd do, but then I have to do something else. What was the moment that you realised like photography was the thing that you wanted to do? So at my course at St Martin's, we had two years at university, one year on the year out where we did industry work. And during the year out, I was assisting Jamie Morgan and I did an internship at Show Studio. And then I remember it was Nick Knight's team and Jamie who said, you need to do your own things. From that moment on, I took it on and I remember saying to myself, that photography, even though I'm a student, I shouldn't see myself as a student photographer. So I kind of imagined I was already in the world. So then when I started creating shoots during my year out, it was as if I'd already graduated. So it was that moment, I think it was probably like six months to a year before I graduated. So you've had kind of like a background in everything um, fashion related. Do you think that's important if you want to shoot fashion specifically? I think it's very important to understand who your team and what your team does. I remember when I was on that set with Barry and Jamie, being so enamoured how they each had knowledge and, and an insight into each other's craft. It wasn't separate, it wasn't the stylist and the photographer, it was the team creating an image. Because the more insight you have into your other teammates' roles, the easier and also the more decisive you can be on set. So recently I've been looking a lot into makeup just so I can understand what it means to t say something to a makeup artist. Without the knowledge of what you're actually asking them to do, you could be asking them to do something that takes hours, when in reality, all you want to change is maybe the thickness of an eyeliner or something like that. Not just fashion, I think any industry, you need to know that everything takes, you know, like they say, it takes a village to raise a child, and it takes a team to make an image. So you talked a bit about not knowing that you could make money from photography. When did you realise that this was a career? In all honesty, I would say only two years ago, um, because wow. up until that point, I was still doing multiple roles. And some of the other roles, hats I put on, were gaining more money than my photography. It was hard, because there wasn't many um, examples for me growing up. To be like, oh, that's another black photographer who's like done it. There's like. I can count them on my hand, but they're also very different, usually photojournalists or um, specifically art. So when it came to fashion, I was like, am I going to be able to really do this how I want to do it? But I think in the last couple of years, you know, things have shifted to allow people like me to take those kind of images. What sort of challenges have you faced along the way and how have you overcome them? Being a black artist in this world, there are things that are going to happen to you and things that will knock you down. But I've, I've learned through growth and therapy and friends that a lot of people's 
reactions to me or towards me is none of my business because I know who I am. And if they're willing to see me in such, you know, a specific trait via skin colour or sexuality, then I guess we just should work together. And, and you know, uh, thank you for showing me who you are type thing, but it takes me a long time to get over it. You know, people have touched my hair on set and people have like, assumed I'd like do this type of image because of who I am. But then, you know, a subtle, you know, a quick check. I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that and keep it moving. So it's kind of just living in my own world, but it takes time and training every day to remember that. Campbell, can you explain what we're looking for? My task, I want the participants to do a five-page editorial based on a photographer from their heritage. And the photographer of choice has to be 60 years of age and above. So that means they could be dead or alive. Um, the more obscure, the better. And plus the 50 to 100 word description of the photographer of choice. Um, just so we know who, what, when and why. The media is optional, but photography has to be the lead medium. For me, it was, I did this task once and it really opened my eyes. I mean, if you use your phone, if you use anything that's at your disposal, but I really want you to know where you as an artist come from in the line of heritage of photographers, because as a black photographer, there wasn't many, but then as I looked into it, there were so many. So just because they may not be a lot of people online or in the mainstream media that's when they don't exist. So that's what I hope the participants will gain from this task. Can you explain where someone should start with this task? I would say start with a simple Google search. Like say, for example, like I'm Ghanaian, but I was brought up in England. So I just literally type in Ghanaian photographers or documentaries. A lot of my research comes from documentaries and films because you'd be surprised they're featured in there and they don't have to be fashion photographers. So widen the scope. So literally think about it as photography. So this could be landscapes, this could be portraits, this could be journalism, this could be forensic photographers. It could be any type of photography, but someone who comes from your background, think about your cultural history, and I'm sure you'll find someone from there that you can um, be inspired by. So once someone finds out who or what they're photographing, how do they go about actually shooting it? Because it's five pages, maybe get two images from the inspiration photographer and dissect it. Don't mimic it, but think, what is it about these images that I like? And then contextualize it. So find out the date, the year of when that was shot. That will influence your reasons for liking it. And then from the little pool of energy of why you like the image, then create yours, but try not to plagiarize. Um, but yeah, just think about why do I love these images? Um, and yeah. What else do they need to consider? What about hair and makeup and set design? Work within your means. When I first started shooting, I didn't have access to all of those things. Yet some of my favorite images are from when it was just me and an Ikea lamp. And think about the energy you're trying to portray to me, the viewer, and whoever else will see the images. Are there any key pieces of advice that you have uh, for taking photos? Don't take too many. And go with your gut feeling. If you like an image, just select it. And, you know, don't spend too much time because you can sit there for hours trying to think, oh, what, five images? But just go with your initial, your initial instinct. That was amazing, Campbell. Thank you so much for joining us today. No, thank you for having me. Can't wait to see what everyone comes up with. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much. We're looking for a five-page editorial using equipment you already have and taking inspiration from an older photographer. To send us your work, click the link in the description below. We can't wait to see what you come up with. Subscribe to ID on YouTube for the next installment. See you at summer school.